Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. Today, we are not going to be doing anything Lord of the Boardy at all. We're actually going to be diving into another Fire and Ice review, which in the past has just been me and Tim talking about games that we kind of just disagree on usually. Like we did a yeah. Villainous episode. We also did a... Um, Oh, do an Imperium episode. That was fun. Uh, but today, yes, that was, that was that was not fun. It was fun, but it was irritating. And now we are we're going to be diving in with uh, two awesome friends of ours, Foster the Meeple. Hello, guys. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so happy to have you guys here. You are some of our very best, most most best friends in the content creation space. I'm I'm wearing your I'm wearing your shirt right now. I'm just, I'm just super excited um, to argue with both of you. <laughs> Yes. I'm also very, I'm also extremely excited to argue, argue with both and all of you. Um, what are we going to be talking about today, Tim? Which game? Which game? Oh, we're talking about Endless Winter, in which I feel like three of us are on the same page and one of us uh, may not be. The winter needs to end. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who it is. Um, let me let me preface by talking a little bit about what the game is. Um, it is marketed as a worker placement deck building game, um, very much a Euro game. There's a lot of little modules that you basically just kind of poke at and score different types of victory points. Um, there's like five different things that you basically just like jump into. Like you might be hunting animals, which is just like set collection, or you might be playing this uh, kind of like this area control puzzle game with your tents. There's all these like different little areas and your worker placement spots each basically just do something in those areas of the game. Um, this is by Fantasia Games. Um, so that means that it's going to be very, very decked out with a ton of components and such. Um, the artist is the Miko, so the art is obviously pretty great. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with that, but we'll see. No, agree. <laughs> and designer Stan Kordonsky. Um, I don't want to start off by saying that my biggest issue with this so far was the marketing, because for me... I was really irritated with the fact that worker placement in this game is basically some of the weakest worker placement I think I've ever seen. It was like irritating because <laughs> I'm just going to say that first off. All right. And um, it's been, been good. I've been, See I've been you later. <laughs> 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 Hold on. Okay, finish your thought. Finish your thought, please. Okay, I wanted to say this, so I just wanted to say it right out of the gate. Okay, mm -hmm. here's my problem. And I complained on Twitter about this, and a lot of people got on me for it. Here's my issue. You have four action spots uh -huh. and you place your piece there. If you're the first one there, you get a small, tiny little bonus at the end of that action. It's usually like a couple resources, maybe a little thing, you know, whatever. Anybody else, though, even yourself can go back there and you can still do one action once, one action any number of times. Never at any point did it ever feel like I was actually getting in the way of my opponent. It just felt like I was doing an action, placing my piece. I never felt like that, ooh, she took my spot, I'm mad, because I could still go there and do one action once, one action any number of times. That little bonus never really mattered to me enough to be like, ooh, I'm so mad that you went there first, and I always got one of those bonuses at least once. It's basically just action selection, but they just painted it and were like, it's worker placement. And it's really the weakest worker placement I've ever seen. If you were not able to do the action any number of times, I feel like it would be a little bit more interesting. But the fact that you can do so much action, even if you were already the one there, maybe maybe all they needed to do was make it to where I couldn't place my piece there if I had already had a piece there. That would already make it more interesting. But I feel like there's this... There's this end game in this game where you just like have too many resources. It was almost too easy. And I think like it's all stemming from my problem with this action selection system that they got going on here. Barely worker placement. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Would you like to go first, Foster the Media? I want to jump in real quick here. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> I agree completely. And it, so far, thank you. That thank you. When I was playing the game, I was like, I don't feel like I'm just doing my own thing over here because I wasn't getting in anyone's way. I wasn't getting in Jamie's way. And I was like, why don't I just go play Merchant's Cove, which is a better game? <laughs> 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 
let me absorb that information real quick. Um, so Jamie, do you do you want to step in? I will or just say I, I think jump that in there's, and attack these guys. There's so many games now that say worker placement, but it's not true worker placement. I think that the idea of worker placement in general has been muddied in the board game hobby. Let's be honest. I agree. There's so many worker placement games where multiple people can go to multiple spaces at the same time. It's true. I didn't, there were actually times we were playing where Jeff was, had his butt in the spot where I wanted to go because I needed extra like food or whatever. And there was that one little okay. circle that gave you some extra resources. Okay, but it's not detrimental enough. I almost starved. It's not, you can just <laughs> wait until next round to do the thing. But then there was other That's things that relied well. on the engine that I was building that I needed food I just, in order to do. I'm, I'm. I'm being fascistic <laughs> on a reason, <laughs> for a reason. Like, I'm playing devil's advocate here because I don't think this is actually, like, a super bad game by any means. But I do feel like you are somewhat playing your own game as you do this. You're playing your own little puzzle with all the different things that exist in this game. And yeah. that's great. But there's games that do it better. And it wasn't marketed that way to me. It was marketed as the worker placement, dude. deck builder, whatever. Yeah. It, in my opinion, it didn't deliver on that. Is that a two-player problem, though? Has anybody? Yeah, played that's it a fair point. We should premise two? that. So, only yeah. played it at so, two. so, so, so. Here's the thing: I've played it two-player and I've played it three-player. For me, neither player count. I felt like I was like missing out on the actions that I missed because I would be able to go first and next turn order if I tried really hard with the eclipse phase. And so, like, when I thought, like, okay, if I really had to get something, I could do it pretty much every time. Uh -huh. um, but I never played higher than three, and it goes up to four. Has anybody played up to four player? No, I only played it at two players, too. Okay. Um, but I feel like the problem that you're addressing was only going to get worse at four players. Yeah. Or, or actually, it might actually it's going to get better right. because you're saying right, that right, 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 when right. you yeah. go to one spot, right, it's not going to affect as much. And I agree with yeah. Jamie totally in that because every time Jackie took a spot for me, like hunting, whatever, like I wanted that resource because the rounds are so quick. Mm -hmm. you know and i feel sure. like work replacement for me if i think it's weak i feel like it's not allowing you to generate a lot of combos but because you have that infinity spot and it chains down a whole linear path and activates boom and boom and boom that is what made it fun for me actually because i enjoyed i enjoyed the work replacement i thought it was pretty cool <clears throat> so yeah yeah I, I i get what you're saying and it was funny because when i posted this on twitter uh it was more of like people disagreed with, uh, they thought that I was basically saying what worker placement was and could be. And I was uh -huh. deciding that this was not a good worker placement uh, example, which was basically all I was saying. And I still stand to it that I feel like it's really weak worker placement um, because it, honestly, okay, let's actually, I don't think I'll be changed my mind on that one, but the deck building, maybe it will. Because I feel like the deck building is good, but it's so weirdly smooth. I don't know how to explain this game because for some reason it felt like the entire game was just like super smooth, which is weird because that contrasts the game's setup, which was some of the most annoying setup I've ever done in a game. In fact, why don't we start with setup we probably yeah. should have started there anyways, because that's the first thing that you're going to do when you open this box. I was literally pulling every single thing out. I was reading the rule book, putting the things in the new, like each individual uh, slot. And Kate was just on the couch. She just like, kept looking over and was like, still setting up? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and she would just start cracking up. And I'm like, there was like one point at which I was like, yeah, so we're almost done, but there's still the area control board that I have to do. So the hexes I have to do. And I'm like counting uh -huh. the number of hexes. And I was like, I can't believe there's actually another thing to do. Like, this uh -huh. is crazy. It almost feels like, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but it almost feels like this game was never tested on a real live table. And it felt like it was just automated on a TTS server. Like this was play tested on TTS and they uh -huh. just had a script that auto set up the game. And it's like, oh, it's not too bad. There's just like five different modules. But uh -huh. then when you're actually there and you're actually putting out the modules, it's kind of insane. Like it's yeah. a lot of setup. That or they Is had a massive table. How do you feel about the setup, Jeff? Yeah, you guys know my opinion on this, but just for everyone watching, uh, similar experience. He had a meltdown. My, yeah, I basically, I didn't finish that up. I just gave up because I hadn't even gotten to that board that Sam is referencing and I was already freaking out. And then Sam's like, wait, 
you haven't even done this part of the game yet. And There's I was more? like, I'm done. My issue yeah. was more so like, I couldn't figure out the verbiage around the cards. It was like, there should be nine starter cards or whatever. And I had seven and I could not find the other two because in my, it was my fault. They were like stuck with the culture cards, but like they oh, look gotcha. similar, but they had that little logo on it. And I was like, it took and me the for- same back too. Oh, right. This is wonderful. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I, they were the, I couldn't see the back. So Tim, because they were in the face up stacks. I'm helping you here. I'm agreeing with listen, you. Saying listen, that I will back. accept 50% responsibility for the setup. It's on me, yeah. but it still was garbage. Jeff's not known for being able to find things, okay? It's one of those okay, things where yeah. he's like, we're, we're in the plates. I'm like, the cupboard where they've literally always been. It was the exact same situation. I can't find these nine cards. I was over there for five minutes, and I was like, Jeff, they're right there. This and is, he's like, oh. This is blasphemous. <laughs> this is yeah. not at all how I it will went. say, the setup is brutal it's just long but to be fair like i set up wonderland's war yesterday not much different it's a lot like it's just one of those wonderland's games where war a is a lot as well yeah. i will yeah. say we were not talking about that game but i agree that that's another game where it's like man this is this yeah. is a, a setup i'll tell you what but, it's also yeah, just three months with it three table five size setting up during fire nights too oh, oh my sorry. gosh yeah it was like no, five no. of us were setting for it and during the fire nights thing and then it took like Still 10 minutes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It was still a very long time. Yeah. I, I feel like I still want to make that video at some point where, uh, like, it just, like, titled Games Were Not Meant to Be Played Anymore. <laughs> because it just seems like with all of these Kickstarter uh, types of games, yeah. Yeah. they're just so over the top so that the setup can sometimes just take as... It just feels so insurmountable. It's just like, what the heck? Why is there so many yeah. things? I said to Jamie... Did, um, oh, go ahead, Tim. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, um, did both of you get the playmat? No. I, I have oh. a playmat. I have the one that fits everything. Yeah. But it's just the one mat. And yeah, because I feel like yeah. that is... I feel like just the if you see the playmat alone on your table, it's like, holy hell, Like this is going to be a big-ass game. Right. It's right? huge. Yeah, yeah, I just have the one playmat. There was like modular playmats too. Like I remember during the campaign, you could be like, uh-huh. do you want two playmats, three, uh-huh. or one... And it was like, <laughs> what is even happening? Yeah. What is going on with this industry? Like, that's so ridiculous. So I got the yeah. one because I was like, oh, might as well. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, you know, I'm just I fell right into it. But yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the setup. I think that's one. I don't think you had any problems with it. Right, Tim? Um, I I mean, I agree in the same thing. It's like it was clunky and it took me forever to set up two. <laughs> but um. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I minded it as much because everything was pretty and like really nice. So I kind of just it took is. my time and like left the video on and was like watching it with like good music. So for me, I didn't worry about it too much. The part I did have a problem with though was in the rule book. It doesn't tell you where to get like during gameplay, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, during gameplay, it doesn't tell you where to find each resource. That was a pain because I'm like, how do I get meat again? How do I generate labor? How do I spend labor? And it's mm-hmm. like that part to me was clunky. And I feel like if they had one reference card just showing like this is how you get meat, this is how you get labor, and this is how you do everything, it would bring in like the gameplay so much faster. Because that first play, I don't even want to count it because it was so like, it was wrong. <laughs> like we just played wrong, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, and then sorry, Jeff, I cut you off a little bit earlier. What were you going to say? Uh, I was just going to agree with Sam, like his point about like mm-hmm. there are instances where these games are getting so big and so grandiose and the setup takes so long that I'm immediately like, I don't know if I can like this game now because I'm already Mm, annoyed. And I think that needs to be taken into consideration. Like we play a ton of games due to what we do. And I'm thinking of someone that might see that on the shelf and be like, this is beautiful. I want to play this game. They rip open that rule book and that setup and, I just don't know how good of an experience that's going to be. Uh-huh. It's interesting because I feel like this game in particular, it almost poses itself as a heavier Euro than I feel it actually is. And I could be wrong about that. It's definitely, it might be a heavy Euro, but it's not a crunchy one because I never felt like I had any crunch at the end game with no expansions. Uh, 
That's an important point. With no expansions, I never felt like I had any end game crunch. I felt like I had a sur- like a ton of resources at the end of the game. Like I was able to do everything. Did you guys have a similar thing where you felt like you had like an excess of resources at the end of the game? Because me and Kate both felt like, oh my gosh, I could just do anything I wanted, really. <laughs> and I, I just started. That last round was so powerful. Almost like it was like, ooh, this first round's crunchy. Ooh, this second round was way less crunchy. Third round, oh. wow, no crunch. Fourth round i am invincible like that's how it literally felt like i i could do yeah. every single thing on in the game if i wanted to um uh-huh. what did you guys feel about that i think the first game i felt like i was struggling with resources and the second game i felt like i had a ton of one thing mm-hmm. but not the other because what's there's the meat and then there's what hammers or something mm-hmm. yeah. Me- meat and tools, tools. yeah, yeah. Food so and tools. i had lots of tools at one point but not enough meat or stuff mm-hmm. i think it depended on I used a different um, yeah. faction what? clan chief. Is that what, were they chief? The uh-huh. the chieftains, yeah. yeah. So I used a different one each time, and I think that made a little bit of a difference because I kept putting my chief on the one spot that allowed me to get the hammers or the meat or whatever. I felt like in both games yeah. I had uh, excess of meat and not enough tools. Interesting. Yeah. Um, in both instances, and we played. We've only played twice. We played once with uh, just the base in the second game. We played with the every expansion. Except for the cards. Except for the cards. We played with the rivers and rafts. And <laughs> it was huge. You played, with, you played with both expansions. Yeah. Yeah, it was wild. That's tough. Yeah, it was nuts. <laughs> I can't even imagine that. I can't even imagine I do that. think. But you did cave paintings and rivers and yeah. rafts? Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that is a lot. Yeah, it was, it, there was no room on the table. All in, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh! Oh gosh! Yeah. I, mean, and, I feel the exact same way too. I feel like the resource generation, like the first round, when you don't see how all the pieces connect, it was pretty bad. Like I had nothing by the end, but by second time, second play, when we actually played for real and correctly, then yeah, like you can see. That's where I was actually gonna ask you too. Is that I feel like because I didn't know about the marketing campaign, I didn't know this was marketed as worker placement. I didn't really follow. I more so kind of came into this blind. And so when I first played it, I thought it was more so of a, like a card drafting, like a deck builder, mm. hand management mm. game, more so mm. than a worker placement. That's what I like, came through, which I feel like kind of aligns with your point too. But I just don't, again, I don't see a problem with the worker placement, but I don't, I feel like yeah, it is second yeah, yeah. to everything else. I, I, I agree with, with you on the hand management, uh, deck building being like, it's more forward function. And uh-huh. I think the last question I want to leave with us when we get to the end here is definitely going to be related to two other games. Um, I want to keep that for last. I wonder which one. Um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I can guess this those. Is... If I guess one of those games. <laughs> yeah, this, is a, this is a part of a wider discussion that was just everywhere on the internet when all three of these games were being announced. So, uh-huh. um, But I, I definitely agree that the worker placement is second to the deck building and the hand management of this game. One of the the most interesting mechanics, I feel like, is the fact that you can just play cards at any time during your turn, which was something that took me a while for my bread to, my like my brain to like connect. Like for example, like, oh, I, I need to do this action, I need labor. You can play those cards down for the labor as you go. And so you like have a hand, but then you're like playing them as you go. It's just, it was kind of weird. But it actually felt really good once I figured out that that's how it was. It was like super smooth. Uh-huh. Um and you're going to hear that word a lot with like my like feelings towards this game is that besides setup, the game is like super smooth, like probably like one of the craziest overdeveloped games. I wouldn't say overdeveloped. It was just like crazily well developed. Um, I don't know. This thing uh-huh. was in a development chamber over and over and over again until they just scrapped all the fluff away and you just have the game. You put your worker on the spot, you go and then your turn just plays itself in a way. Um, uh-huh. I don't know. That's how it felt. It was just so smooth. I was just like, boop, oh, good resources. It all just yeah. does everything. Every, the boards were made for it. The cards were made for it. It just, the graphic design is actually really impressive, I would also say. Um, uh-huh. Super easy once you actually get the game set up. I'm, I'm getting a little positive now because I, the things that killed me are, are done now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm past that hump of like ah these things that annoyed the heck out of me. Yeah. Um but yeah, it is really really smooth. I don't know if everybody else feels that yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, I think I I like, wow. I like this game the least out of the the four of us. 
but I would agree with you. If I would have any positive about this game, it would be that. Once you get through setup, once we got through the teach, once you get through like the iconography, the game is super simple and super straightforward and everything flows incredibly well right to the end. Mm-hmm. There's never a point yeah. where I felt like I had to ask Jamie a question or what have you. It was very like everything made sense in the order of what you were doing. Do a thing, yep. get a thing, which gives you another thing, and then you move forward. It was never clunky in that regard. Uh-huh. It facilitates a lot. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like it's so smooth to the point where it's repetitive? A little bit. Mm-hmm. I was going to mention that it, so? it, it does kind of have this little teeny bit of like, by the, I think by the fourth round, I was kind of losing a little bit of interest only because I was like, oh, we're doing this ag- again one more time. And I felt like I was so powerful by that point that I almost had wished that the third round was the last round. And me and Kate were both talking about that. But I don't know. Maybe we maybe we cheated. Maybe we were playing the game wrong. But by the time we hit the fourth round, we were able, if we were low on tools, we were able to do anything we wanted to get those tools. And if we were low uh-huh. on food, we were able to play what we wanted to get that food. Like, uh-huh. I never felt like I, I couldn't get those resources, especially with the... Um, the like the uh, sacrificial track. I don't think that's what it's called. Probably not. <laughs> the honor track, the right side. <laughs> the honor track. Okay, gotcha. Honor the and track. sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that track. Um, uh, that one is a uh, super super good uh, towards the end of the game. I remember I went up uh, a lot on one side, and then I was able to just get so many of those idol symbols and go up pretty high on the other side just within the last round alone, which is kind of crazy. That's pretty wild, honestly. Yeah. I feel like the... uh, Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jamie. Go ahead. No, you go. I'm not not fully formed in my thought yet. Okay. (laughs) So the the sacrificial track, as you may call it. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like... I think that's my second gripe about the game. Like, I do enjoy the game a lot. I feel like the more I play it, kind of like what Sam was mentioning, the more he plays it, the more you enjoy it too. Same for me. Um, but for the sacrificial, tr- the great, I'm calling it sacrificial track now. Too. The honor track. <laughs> the honor track. Um, I think that was like the dullest point of the game for me because it takes like six climbs for you to gain a reward. And I know it's for like end game goals. But out of everything else, like all the little modulars, like the tents playing air control and the set collection with the animals, like out of everything you're playing, everything has like immediate benefits and it feels good to like be doing those actions. But it takes like, such, it feels like it's such a drag. It almost feels like work for you to climb up that track just so you can get points. And I felt like by the end, it wasn't as crunchy as you mentioned. Um, it wasn't as crunchy as I would have liked it because mm-hmm. you just gain, you, you gain one static point. You know, there's no mm-hmm. different, there's no non-linear, non-linearity in that. And that's what yeah. I would have enjoyed more is if that track was just a little better. At the same time, I get why they did it uh, for end game stuff because everything else is so immediate. And like, I feel like if you made that more immediate stuff, then it would just be too powerful. And combined with the mega list where you put like little stones and slots and get immediate rewards, you know? And then, so I don't think there's a fix for that, but it was the most boringest part of the modules for me. I 100% agree uh, with that. Actually... <laughs> That's a that's uh, a good wait. You guys agree? I agree with it. I almost forgot that it okay. exi- Jeff was just climbing up, and I was like, "Boring. That's not doing so nothing was, for me." Yeah. I, I was climbing up it too, but Kate didn't care for it at all. So she uh-huh. was doing more hunting, and I did barely any hunting. Uh, right. But I did more megaliths. Uh, so it was kind of interesting. We we each kind of like chose a couple tracks. I feel like there's no way that you can just focus on like one track and be very yeah. successful i think you have to dabble in like two or three that, that's kind of like help, right that's a great thing uh, that's great it's kind of uh, like uh i don't know if it's a positive or a negative that i feel about this and maybe i just haven't developed or played enough to like develop like a, an efficient strategy in this game but i feel like to your point you you, you you pick like a couple things because if you do too many things you're not going to be successful if you only do one you're not going to be sure. successful but i felt yeah. like even with the expansions like it, it didn't matter which path I chose. It didn't mm-hmm. seem like one was more efficient than another. Like Jamie did two of, like, let's say she did uh, the tents, the area the control piece, and then uh-huh. the monoliths. And I did two other things. It didn't feel like either of us were getting a strategic advantage for picking those tracks. 
And again, maybe that just comes down to playing the game more mm-hmm. and understanding the strategy mm-hmm. and what like meshes better together. But I just felt like it didn't matter what tracks I picked. I don't think that we're experienced enough, I guess, to make that call. Because the first time, I well, you crushed me in the first game. Because I just wanted to do everything. And I was like, well, I got to get the culture cards. And oop, I got to go up on the track. And I have to lay my little things here. And I got to put tents there. And I have to do this. And I did everything. And I was like uh-huh. 30 points behind or something. It was a horrible strategy. But then the next time I picked a couple <laughs> things. And I think the next time I'd pick a couple different things. And just to kind of see how it went. But I would say it's really interesting that you guys really like the deck building aspect of it. Because I almost felt like it was the weakest part for me. Because I felt like I, the cards that I was getting over and over and over again were just the the hunter cards or the people <laughs> cards or whatever. And I was like, these all do the, the same thing. I wanted the culture cards, but it's harder to get the culture cards. But they were more sure. fun to me because you play them out and then you get to do this cool thing. And then, you know, I don't know. I really liked the culture cards and I wish that I could have more of those and less of the hunters mm. or whatever they were. Remember? Yeah. I think for me, it just made a difference, which was kind of nice. Like when I did get more of the hunters, for example, I was naturally hunting more or being better at hunting. Like I felt like when I was getting more of, so I actually did this crazy like shaman strategy. I basically exclusively grabbed tons of shamans. Like dude, I was like, my deck was shaman city. Every single time I was like shamans, shamans, shamans. It was great. Um, and I was playing to like my eclipse benefits and just basically using my shop. It was just this like cool little dealy wop. But anyways, with all of that, I was going up the honor track, obviously, because, you know, that's kind of what they're there for as well. So all that to say is like, I felt like it worked because I ended up doing that and I ended up completing my honor track because of it. Um, whereas Kate really struggled because she didn't care for the shamans. And so I thought that was kind of an interesting thing of like, oh, I wonder if I had picked up different cards, would I have struggled less or sorry, would I have struggled more with this track that I wanted to go up? Um, so it felt like it did like play into my game. I think that's why I liked Uh the deck building, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily strong in either deck building or worker placement. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Honestly, sometimes I, I look at this game and I'm like, I don't even know why I like this game. <laughs> it's very like mediocre in so many ways. Yeah. Yet for some reason, it's really enjoyable. But I agree about the I agree about the you're mentioning the different paths and how like each different path, it's almost like it doesn't matter which one you go up. And I completely agree because every single path has a way to get a symbol in another path. So, for example, you could be doing the area control board. Well, you can try to do area control and get the idle symbols if you want to go up the honor track. But instead, you could do the area control to benefit another track. But that's all within the area control. You can do the honor track and benefit yourself in the area control. So, like, everything kind of, like, feeds into one another and you can just kind of choose as you go. And I would contrast this with Tapestry, where there's four tracks in the game. You go up one and you have to find the combinations between the tracks because there's no clear answer. It is such a puzzle in Tapestry, which is really cool. You could go up exploration and you will never touch science, but you could touch science and you'll find all these weird combos within. In this game, it was so clear because of the symbol and the ideology. Like you could just, you could just do whatever with no matter what track. I don't know. I, feel like I, don't know. I, I agree. The whole game is just one big puzzle. So like one section on its own is not impressive, but the fact that you're like, it's just like a tree of decisions that I can't, it's just so many decisions, but that's part of the puzzle. Okay. But I think that goes back to my original point, No, 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 no. no. <laughs> which is if you are sitting there playing your own solitaire puzzle, I like there to are play games that do myself. that way better. I don't need you to puzzle. But this one does it differently. <laughs> But does it? I think so. I think it does different, not just by theme, but I feel mm. like it. I think that's what probably my favorite thing about Endless Winter and why I like it a lot so far is because you have so many different little modules that all come in to get that all come together in the middle. Like everything has a reason to be there. The only thing that like nothing feels dead to me. Like you should be going up different things. You go up too many things, yeah, of course it's gonna hurt. 
but yeah, you but, focus in on a couple of things at the same time, it, it's nice. But there's like how many feel things? Like it's out of place. There's how many things, and if a you lot. go up more than like two, but Jeff, you're we, done. We also played with too many things. <laughs> Part I'm just that, saying that's th- nice those <laughs> those modules exist and they're there for a reason. Yeah, it doesn't say don't play with all of these. I, I don't know. That's true. That's true. It doesn't say like play with one uh, at a time. I I think Everdale actually has a rule for this where they say like they recommend you only play with one expansion at a time in Everdale. Uh-huh. Um, and I, having played multiple expansions at the same time, I completely agree. It's, okay. it's very wise to only play one at a time. Yeah. Um, and I think this game probably would do, it sounds like they should probably not let you play all of them at the yeah. same time, or at least advise against it. I haven't tried it because I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will, ad- I will state to, to spin this a little bit positively. The rivers and rafts expansion is very good. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. Um, it it ch- it takes the area control module and, and and greatly improves it in my opinion. Um, the uh-huh. cave paintings module. I mean, if you like roll and write stuff, then yeah, you might want to. If you throw like it boring in, but... roll and writes, you might like the cave painting expansion. Ooh. Oh, listen, I love <laughs> endless winter, <laughs> but that was not fun. That part of it, I was like, why am I doing this? I hate that. It's a very straightforward. Yeah. Uh, I guess attempt that like it's not a roll and write but an end write or whatever you want to call it where you're literally just connecting dots and like there's no real like I love connect substance dots. to it it's just kind of like another thing you can do whereas I think rivers yeah. and rafts actually changes the area control enough and gives you like a little canoe meeple that you can like manipulate where you put your tents down and there's like a, an actual yeah. like stream track that matters it changes the game enough to make it worthwhile to try out where i think cave paintings just gives you another thing to do i don't know and i will say the animals that come with the rivers and raft expansion versus the cave pant- paintings cave paintings gives you a dumb horse i don't care about it but the rivers ah. and rafts gave us like the seal or a whale or something like was that it, a walrus? <laughs> it might have been a walrus and it was very fun I didn't like the horse. Yeah. Oh. I like the walrus. Yeah. So that made a difference for me. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks because that symbol is so cool. The little cave painting symbol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like to do the action. I was like, oh man, I like to see this little, it's like a torch. Yeah. I was like, oh, I like to see that torch around the map more. Um, but I completely agree. It was very uninspired. I felt like that entire section of it. I was like, if you really want to do uh, a roll and write or a write, I feel like this is not going to give you that satisfaction mm-hmm. in this. It feels like a very throw-on add-on to the campaign to basically uh, expansion bloat. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Fantasia Games, I love what you do. I'm sorry uh, if you're watching. This. We also do <laughs> just for actually, context. I love yeah, this game. <laughs> I, but I wish the horses. I think that this is one of the most gorgeous games of the year. I just felt like that was not satisfying. Here's a question, personally. So because I agree, like it. it's beautiful. What if yeah. this game wasn't that? Would your opinions on it change? Um, Ah, if they didn't have those little monolith resin tokens. Probably. Oh. <laughs> I feel like it would. That's a big thing. I mean, for me, of course, like taking pictures and stuff, like visuals are a big thing. I know that's subjective, but I'm just curious, like how, what percentage of the game enjoyment is due to the artwork, the components and how grandiose mm. that is. But that could be every game though. Imagine like, like Root being ugly. Cuba <laughs> Libre. But, but is amazing. Thing, but here's the thing. And is not cute. And it has like That's true. Ugly root. Stock art. The game huh. the game will the game will stand, you know, if it's a good game, I think. Like for me, I would rather things be a little bit more simplistic sometimes. Uh-huh. Um like if we're gonna do we wanna talk about components and stuff? That's up to you. Have yeah, we done that? <laughs> okay. Let's let's get into it a little bit. If I if were if it were my game, if I had designed this, I would have changed a couple of things. And here is what I would have changed. I would have made the worker meeples not screen printed, and then I would have made the chieftain's meeples, meeples that too. were screen printed. Because one thing that I don't like when games do <clears throat> <clears throat> Dwellings of Elder Vale, um, is when Uh-oh. they mix meeples and miniatures in the same game. Because for yeah. me, I see a meeple, I see a miniature, and I think they never look good by each other. Never. Because you got a, a detailed miniature and a meeple, they just don't look good together. Um, like, I wish Merchant's Cove had not done miniatures, I wish they had done meeples. Like, there's 
because what you got the little I could I could say this about every game. This is a personal thing, but I will say that the chieftains take me out because they're detailed miniatures amongst these meeples. I just think that a simple change would have been just just keep everything meeple. We don't need to do all the crazy, you know, minis. Um, Wait a second. I don't can, know, can, I, man. can I tell you something personal? Yeah, please, please do. Please do. Can I tell you something personal between the the um, four of us here? <laughs> Uh, my palms started sweating when you said dwellings had an error. <laughs> the fact that it's not okay for meeples and for miniatures to, to live to coexist in the same game. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? It's fine. I just think it doesn't look good. That's but all. that's how you know the difference between oh the God. kings and the peasants. My heart. <laughs> but Sam, Sam, uh, quick caveat here. You, are you, am I misremembering this? You're not a huge fan of miniatures in general. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. I'm saying this is a very personal thing for me. Like, I don't think it's a problem with the game. I think it was a problem with the game, but in the context of yeah. me, nobody else will probably have this issue. For me, I don't like the fact that miniatures don't have as good of a tactile feel when you're moving them. Like, oh, where do I touch this guy from the spear point or the, the head? Or do I just touch a meeple that's just one nice piece that doesn't feel like it's going to break when I move it every time? So... For me, I think the miniatures, it's just like, hey, if you're going to paint it, cool. Most people don't paint them. So why are you including them anyways? <laughs> Grab just the cheek by his broad <laughs> shoulders. You tell me that's not cool? <laughs> I'm glad that these ones are at least like washed in a cool way to where I don't feel bad for not painting them. They have a sick like bone look almost. They look like they were carved out of a freaking wood or, or spear or, or uh, you know, ivory. ivory or something. They're really yeah. cool. As if they were ancient yeah. tribesmen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hot thematic. <laughs> but that's a personal thing. So I get it. You know, people love minis, so they, they, they'll love the minis. I will say that all of the components were really nice, but the standard game, also really nice. Because when you get the deluxe version, I remember seeing the, the they were like the wooden models. That's what tokens. we have. They were super nice. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have the resin, so we nice. have the wooden. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're they're so freaking nice. Yeah. There's no problem yeah. with them at all. It's a bit they more actually thematic. almost match the game better. It's thematic, right? Like to have the wooden that's, that's pieces. True. Yeah, like we it's true. we don't have the deluxe version and I would still consider it a deluxe version You'd of the game. Know. You would never 100%, know. You would never know. One hundred percent. That's what I think Fantasia Games does really well. It's like, oh, if you missed out on the Kickstarter campaign, well, the base game still is gorgeous. There's that's nice. there's no like, oh, huge downgrade here. And not to go back to the setup uh, <laughs> argument, but like I do think after you play it once and then you have the game trays, the game trays that you can put all your little components in, it makes it's future perfect. games yeah. much easier to just set up and get out and played. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I think that's worth mentioning here. And that is a big component of the game. Like the inserts are yeah. fantastic. That's huge. Definitely. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Like you yeah. stack the player board inserts like in a little line on one side and then you got all the rest on the other side. I think uh -huh. that's very cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but um, so sp <laughs> speaking of. Okay. You look like. <laughs> so I'm going to pass out. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let me see. Let me let me see for a second. Um, theme. Theme. That's what I want to say before I forget this point. Um, so I really definitely theme. want to talk about theme as well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, theme with, <laughs> I think the part of the theme that misses it for me is the fact that you are controlling this, you're evolving this tribe, right? But you only have three workers and tribe, like a, I felt like a tribe is much bigger than that. So I wish that mm. there were more, I was thinking about how this could be addressed too. Like if you have more tribesmen, tribeswomen. Like, if you have five meeples total, it would be such a cluttered work work placement area, too. So, I feel like it doesn't need that. And it disperses it in the tents. Because, like, the tents is where the air control is happening, too. But thematically, I just I just think it misses that point where, like, you're a tribe, but you have three people. You know? So, it's like... Interesting. Yeah. Mm, Do you disagree? Because I, please say it I, right now. I, 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 think, I think it's abstracted down... And actually, yeah. I think that's my biggest issue with the theme is how like almost abstracted it is. Like, I don't know about you guys, but it was a little weird that like these tribes people are like a lot of them are super white. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, yeah. I am sure it's not on the artist here, uh -huh. um, but I do wish that they did a little bit more like historical checking because it seems like where they're located um, 
this is not it, they would not be that white skin. I mean, it was just really weird. It was a really weird tone thing where I was like, did they do? And and also they made them all very like barbaric looking, mm. like all of the males look like they want to just eat somebody's head mm-hmm. off. And I'm like, dude, this was a this was a real tribe. These were people that really existed. You don't think that like love, poetry, music, uh, people, you know, just doing normal things. They weren't just like barbaric and murder everything that moves around. The reason why we are the way we are today is because of these early humans that adapted culture. And that's why we're di- getting all that stuff. It was kind of weird to see them portrayed as such like violent beings. <laughs> I was just like, goodness gracious. I don't know. Maybe it was just me. But for all like the artwork, it seemed like every single male really did look like they wanted to chop the heads off and then the females looked so nice and it was just like why don't you add a little bit more variety um i don't know it seemed a little weird that was my problem with the theme um specifically i just think that they should have done more research and i would like to know if there was a research consultant put onto the team for this Uh because there is a lot of stuff out there and i know that this time period did not look like this (laughs) it's a fair point Yeah. yeah Yeah, I don't know. I guess I didn't even, I weirdly didn't, I barely thought about the theme while we were playing. I don't know. Yeah. Which might be a bad thing. It's, But it's interesting though, because like I always, I love theme, like theme is what kind of draws me to a game. So I see the cover, I'm like, oh, that's a cool theme. Endless winter. That's like Canada. I will probably love it. <laughs> but as I'm playing the game, I didn't think about it at all. I picked the, I picked the chief's men or chief's woman or whoever that had the dog. Because I wanted the wolf. <laughs> That's yeah. what I thought. Yep. That's like the only thing that I thought of. I wonder if like, yep. I mean, because I think part of it is like survival is always part of that. Yeah. You know, anytime they do a theme that is similar to this, it's all, it's usually about survival, hunting, what have you. Less about community building. I do Very think cave yeah. paintings <laughs> was a good way to incorporate some sort of like Culture. cultural aspect to the game, but when we talk about how that becomes a part of the game that no one really cares about, then that gets missed. Right. And I mm-hmm. wonder yeah. if it would have been worthwhile to have a more core track that incorporated culture or music or art or something so that it wasn't just another, you know, to your point, barbaric uh, survival-esque type game. Well, I think it's sad because they could have swapped the theme with how we often see Vikings portrayed mm-hmm. in board games, which uh-huh. Vikings are always these barbaric berserkers that just pillage and plunder and, you know, all of this stuff. They could have switched the theme over to Vikings, but neither of these are just one-sided cultures. Mm-hmm. Like Vikings were actually some of the cleanest people ever because they lived by the sea and they are never, ever painted that yeah. way. They're yeah. always like super bloodied. And, and so I just feel like I just wish we had like more people that were like brought onto the team to like guide a little bit of that mm-hmm. theme i think it's a fair um, critique. i feel like there's just so many more sides to cultures like this yeah, I, yeah. I just feel like there's more than one side yeah i don't know it kind of bugged me a little bit while we were playing it wasn't a huge thing but i was like i just remembered thinking like it's just another game with a theme like this uh-huh. <laughs> yeah 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 i don't know that's tough too um i mean so coming on to like expansions with like cave painting and everything do you think, I feel like this might be a general question too, but do you think games need expansions like in order to survive on its own? Like, I feel like, you know, the general Absolutely point, no. I'm trying to word my thing better, my question better, but it's like the core <laughs> well, game should be good are... by itself, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We actually just had this yes. conversation because we are ones to buy expansions and they rarely get played. Yeah. And it gets yeah. down yeah. to the point, like we just had a conversation, like moving forward, do we need to start like stopping our purchases of expansion content, unless it's a game we absolutely adore and we know that it's going to get played. But like we are very easy sells on like all of the extra stuff. Yeah. And it just never hits the table. It's also weird because it's such a common thing now. Like you used to have to wait for an expansion that used to be like, Hey, next year it's an expansion, but Mm -hmm. now you get a Kickstarter. It's like, it comes with three expansions and it's like, are they expansions yeah. or is this just this is just the game? You just gave mm-hmm. me more modules to play with. I don't know, but yeah, yeah. I would definitely. It's similar agree with to that. I think what's happening in video games is like video you games, know, right? Yeah, they're releasing content that put it's in the game game's code, but they're releasing it as expansion content and making people pay for it. I mean, 
I think there's a similar trajectory here where it's like, I do think a game should just live on its own. And if you want to produce expansion content a year or two years later, whatever, but all of these Kickstarters now, it's all about stretch goals. It's all about these, you know, bonus additions to games to drive up Mm -hmm. revenue or whatever you want to call it. I I don't know. Uh I don't know. Yeah, like that. my biggest pet peeve now. No, you're totally right because like my biggest pet peeve now. So I just did a massive culling. I got rid of half my games. Um, <laughs> that was a context for it. Yeah. But then like literally though. But when I did, I'm like, dude, there's so many expansions I got rid of because like they never got played. Exactly like Jeff said. And it yep. like makes me realize like going forward, like I don't think I want to go into expansions as much either, unless I know like this game is going to be played a lot mm-hmm. or like this is yeah. going to be a heavy hitter. But yeah, like the my biggest pet peeve for like expansions are like modules. Like I cannot stand like mini five card modules. Like that kills me. And there are a ton of those in this game. It's like just include in the core game or take it out. Like it doesn't need the little five cards or like one little mini and something else happens. I'm like just core game and one expansion, just like one set expansion. Like Jamie said, a year later would be would be perfect. So you don't like when like, it's like, it like here's five extra promo packs. Each promo pack has five cards in it. Just give me one so promo pack and 25 cards. Yeah, just clutter. <laughs> oh my just gosh, the dude, there were so many promo packs in this game. I forgot about that. There's like uh-huh. so many little mini expansions. I almost got like overwhelmed. I was like, I don't think I'm going to include any of these. My favorite expansion to add has been the Ancestors one because I realized that the Chieftains, you then have to pay in order to use their ability. And I found that that helped a bit alleviate some of the, oh, I have so much power. Mm. I uh-huh. wanted to make the game harder. So Rivers and Rafts makes the game pretty hard. And also Ancestors makes the game harder. And so I found that my favorite version of the game was with Rivers and Rafts and those chieftains that made the game like, oh, this is tough now. Like, I feel like I have to really try and get these resources. Um, And I I enjoyed it best then. I do wish that like we didn't have to do this thing where we're just buying expansions, right? Like we, (laughs) we have to get the expansion right when we get the game. And sometimes the version of the game that you like best is the one with an expansion. Yeah. I wish that games just were great standalone and i think my favorite kinds of expansions are ones that you can basically just plug into the game but not change any core game element because for me rivers and rafts chains changes the area control completely which usually is not how i like expansions but for me it it just replaces but that should be in the core game like it's better that that rivers and rafts should be the core version of because it's yes because it makes it so much more interesting with the area control. Uh-huh. Like I think like Root is super nice because, yeah, I can see why they expand it because they're just adding factions to a game that never changes. You don't have to worry about a game changing. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, I think that expansions that change the game are a bit more hard for me to want. Yeah. Whereas games that or expansions that just add a plug in are a lot. We easier. talk about this yeah. um, quite frequently. And the example I always provide is Res Arcana, which I don't know if you guys have played that but those expansions just give you more game it's just more gotcha. game within the core aspect of how that game works it's just more cards and that's it and yeah. those are the expansions i care most about because i love the game already i just want more of that thing i don't i don't yeah. need something broken or added or whatever just give me the core game and a little bit more of the material that you're already providing Totally, mm-hmm. totally. And again, those were, yeah. those are released like two years after the game's released. Just like, oh, let's just do a new expansion for the people that are still playing this game. Yeah. Right. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think for the expansions here, they change the game a lot. They do. Right? They yeah. change yeah. the game. They yeah. give you different culture cards. They give you different tribal cards. And it just yeah. is massively different. So, yep. Yeah, yep. Totally I agree. completely agree. I completely agree. Um, um, and then, yeah. sorry, Sam. there was one no, more no, thing, one more thing I wanted to ask too, and that was with limiters in this game. I feel like this game needs it because you know, you mentioned, uh, you like got endless amounts of shaman, right? Yes. I was yes. surprised <laughs> that there is no limit on those culture cards because I feel like you should be mm. like max three, max five. And so this game really, I feel like limiting might be one of the biggest problems. It's like, it should limit the amount of cards you can gain. It should limit the amount of modules. It should limit the amount of expansions. You yeah. know? 
I, I definitely felt like I broke the game a little bit with the shamans because I was just drawing them every time. And I just felt like, why do I need anything else? This is such a good card right now for what I was doing. And I just yeah. felt like I was like, man, I'm just tailoring my deck to be this like shaman. The shaman uh, deck. <laughs> strat- yeah, I was just a shaman deck. Kate was like, yeah. what the heck are you doing over there? And I'm like, trust me, trust me. It's working. It's working. And I would just and like play like three. Yeah. And it did work. I'd be, I'd be here. And I usually don't win <laughs> um, at games. So it was like, That's man. That's a I lie. Just, uh, it's I usually don't win against Kate. Okay. She's freaking. She's like the silent killer. She's just like, and I'm just like, oh, do that again. Gosh, I'm so stressed. Can we out. clip that? <laughs> the silent killer part. Which part? Please. That's Kate. Kate. Oh yeah, the Kate. Yeah. <laughs> That's a new joke for you. Oh, but yeah. Um, yeah. It would be thematic if they did put a limit because if you think about it, a tribe will only have one shaman. You can't have 20 shamans. That's and, too many. And no one collecting food or anything. Yeah. It's just... That's a good, that's it's a good just point. It's a tribe of shamans. Definitely not. Nothing's I getting done. Definitely 50 shamans. Yeah. Just like and they're everything. all sitting they around being like, now what do we do? What do we do now? What are we going to eat? <laughs> Yeah. All these like there's like seven shamans. It's like, who do you want to get advised by today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. what, is this, what is this tribe doing right now? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Who's gonna hunt? Who's gonna like travel and stuff? Yeah, the, yeah, shaman, yeah. the shaman, you know? <laughs> the shaman does everything. Yeah. yeah, he does everything. He he does he's one with all. Yeah. It's wild. <laughs> oh gosh. So I think like to kind of uh to kind of cap out a little bit of what we've been talking about here today, first off, I do want to say I enjoyed the game the more I played it, but I enjoyed it in a very particular way, and that was with the Ancestors expansion and the Rivers and Rafts expansion. I feel like I got pretty bored of base game pretty quick, uh, just being honest. Um, and uh, But all in all, I think that with those expansions, I feel like I, I have a good game here that I've been enjoying a lot and I do want to play it more. Even now I do want to play it more because there's even like uh-huh. the different um, landmarks that you can add. There's still like variety that you can add in with all of that. Um, I guess I just want to hear like your ending thoughts on the game and also where do you guys place this in the, <laughs> even though I don't think they should be, uh, necessarily um compared to one another i think they're all very different games we got to answer the question you know which is the best game do an imperium endless winter or lost ruins of arnak and i want to hear everybody's opinions on this wants to go first because i have opinions (laughs) okay i can go first i can go first if you guys want go for it I'll go, I'll go i'll go i'll go i'll go i'll go okay okay i'll go second and we'll and foster you guys can close this out okay I like the game a lot. I feel like I totally agree with Sam in that the more I play it, the more I enjoy it too. I've only played cave paintings, which I really liked. I wish that was part of the core game too, because it, for me, felt pretty thematic, like drawing animals on the cave painting, getting different things. I haven't played the other expansions yet. <laughs> Spicy take right like at the it. end, eh? <laughs> I like how I you just threw it. that in, that you liked it at the very end mm-hmm. when you can't say anything against you anymore. That's great. <laughs> no, 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 no. Feel, free to, feel free to rebuttal after. But I think out of the three... so. I mean, everyone who's seen the Dude Imperium review video knows how I feel about it. I feel like I rank this higher than Dude Imperium. I rank <laughs> Arnak last. Like, I didn't. Yeah. Endless Wind is my favorite of the three. Uh, Dude Imperium, fight me for it. I just can't. I can't deal with the combat. The combat kills me. <laughs> Come back, Jeffrey. Je- Jeffrey's I gone. I to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurts. Oh. Yeah. I, I still, I, like, I totally am still firm on that point. Like, I just can't deal with the combat the combat is that it kills me in dude imperium oh please um, oh, yeah. figuratively oh, and kills me, <laughs> kills me man I, I want more from combat but sam's gonna mm. hate what i have to i'm do. just kidding by the way you like what you like man i get it yeah everybody no, no, likes no, no. what be they honest. like you know be honest i'm like i'm like red with like i'm sweating right now because it hurts to hear but it's okay you know you can like what you like dude it's fine yeah so I'm not that's mad. how i feel not mad <laughs> um so i i would say i would say that like i said endless winter i think it got better the more i played it but it also got better with rivers and rafts and ancestors um so in that particular way i think i found the game that i enjoy out of it and i think it's going to be different for everyone like oh do i not need to add any expansions or do i need to add one or two expansions to make this be the game that i want it to be um And so I think that I do enjoy this game a lot. I enjoyed playing it more and more the more I played it. Um, Even with the clunky setup, um, once you get past that, 
it's a good game in here. I think it's very well developed. Um, Arnak was never able to really lift off past being a boring game for me. <laughs> so um, okay. I'm going to have to put Lost Ruins of Arnak at the bottom. So, Tim, we can agree on at least that. Yes. Um, yes. But uh, Dune Imperium, I still think, is the cleanest version of the game. I think it has the strongest in both areas, worker placement and deck building. I think they are both very important within the game. And I just think that the game with expansions has just become even better. And I liked how they didn't really see expansions right when the game came out. Um, that was all that. Yeah, Dune, Dune Imperium is easier to jump into, easier to set up, and just provides a stronger game in all areas for me. Um, so yeah, I would go Dune Imperium, Endless Winter right behind that, and then Arnak at the bottom. Um, Foster the Maple, what are your guys' thoughts? Our thoughts are going to be very different. Go ahead. Yes, I'm here for it. Okay, so I really, really like Endless Winter a lot. I think where it lives for me right now, I don't think this is a game that Jeff and I play by ourselves together. I think this is a game that I introduce to different people of our game group because it's kind of an exciting thing to show them. It's beautiful on the table. You know, you'll have one or two plays of it and with that group of people and it's going to be fun. This is the kind of game that I think is going to be fun for me to show new people. And in that way, I get to enjoy it multiple times without it becoming a stale two player game between us. I don't uh -huh. think I would play with cave paintings again. I want to try the Ancestors expansion, and I will always play with rivers and rafts, but I love it. Um, in terms of where it falls in the three, so it falls in the middle for me. Okay, Endless Winter's in the middle. My <sighs> bottom is Dune Imperium, and my top <laughs> is Lost Rooms of Arnak because I love that game. And if you haven't uh -huh. tried it with the leader Expedition Leaders expansion, you need to, because it has completely changed the game for, at least for you. I loved it regardless. I'll say my piece in a minute. But yeah, I don't know. Dune Imperium's <laughs> just never one that got me. I don't know it's what it fair. is. Yeah. It's fair. I'm not it is It is more mean. Um, I don't know much, but I feel like, Jamie, you prefer games that are a little less mean. Or do you yeah. like the mean? Jamie is a monster. Yeah. <laughs> are you kidding? Haven't you ever played Combat attack, with attack, attack, Remember? attack. So... So yeah. now I'm really confused it's as to the how theme. Dune Imperium it's ended it's, on the bottom. I think bottom. it's the theme because I don't care about Dune. I know there are people here, Sam and Jeff, who care about Dune. I don't know, Tim, if you care about Dune, but um, I don't. I'm over it. But you know what I do um, care about? Indiana Jones, okay? And that's basically Lost Ruins of Arnak. Yeah. So And Endless Winter is also gorgeous. Uh -huh. I just think like Arnak is something that I'll play solo. Arnak is something that I'll play on BGA with people. Mm. Arnak is something that... Oh, Arnak to... on BGA is garbage. Mm. Whoa. Mm. Arnak, <laughs> I love. We gotta, we gotta hear that. Whoa. It's just too much. Jeff, it's too much on BGA. You're just too much. It's too, <laughs> honestly, it's too much color. There's too much color in that I game. I love it. To be adequate on BGA. Right. Anyways. <laughs> you're that Me now? Yeah. Well, I'm glad we, I'm glad we agree opinion. that uh, <laughs> that's on the bottom. What's on the bottom? Actually, I think, all right, I think Jamie said Dune Imperium is the bottom, and I put Dune Imperium yes. second. Yeah, nice try, Tim. You're right. I fixed myself, okay? I adjusted. You're moving it down? No, no, no. it was okay. on second. Not second for me. Go ahead. As the person here that likes Endless Winter the least, I wanted to hate on it a little bit more than I think I actually, actually feel, because I didn't want us all to just agree on stuff. Uh-huh. I actually don't mind this game. Um, I would play it any time someone wanted to play it. It's just not going to be one that I'm going to pick. That being said, I agree with Jamie. I would always play this with Rivers and Rafts moving forward. Uh -huh. I want to try Ancestors, and I probably wouldn't play it again with Cave Painting. Okay. Um, I just felt like it was a game that was fine. I'm glad I experienced it, but it didn't give me something that wanted me to return to it didn't feel like I could find something in the game strategy wise that would be like, Oh, I want to try this combo next time. It didn't have that feel for me. Like a Dune Imperium does. Um, in terms of the three, which I agree with Sam, like I love to compare Arnak and Dune because it gets so many people fired up. <laughs> um, 
but I don't think they need to be compared. And I don't think End- Endless Winter needs to be compared to these two either. Mm-hmm. But if we're forced to, then I think Arnak base is probably at the bottom, but with Hidden Leaders, it's above Endless Winter for me. Mm. Um, I do like the asymmetry that they add with Expedition Leaders. Um, did I say Hidden Leaders? <laughs> That's a different game. <laughs> um, That's also a fun game, yeah. but different. <laughs> um, I do like the, like I mentioned, I do like the asymmetry that they added with Expedition Leaders into Arnak. Um, Dune is so far above and beyond in that stratosphere of those three games for me. Um, one, I do care about Dune. Same. Um, I love the movie. I've, I love the book. I haven't read other than the original Dune, but I love that world. And I do feel like the decisions matter in Dune. You can completely cause havoc in that game to other players, depending on what you choose to do, or completely sabotage your own game if you make mistakes. Hmm. And that has to matter for something. I don't feel the same way when I play Endless Winter or Arna. Yeah, Dune it is just for sure. feels like, a, like I'm going through the motions of doing a thing yeah. to score as many possible victory points as I can. It just seems monotonous. And I don't mean that in like a, you know, a super detrimental way. It's just the way I feel when I play those games. So I like strategy um, and I just don't feel like I get enough of it in Endless Winter and even more so in uh, Arnak base game. So again, like doing Imperium. Way up, Endless Winter and Arnak are interchangeable depending on which expansions are thrown in. Interesting. I like mm-hmm. it. Very. I like it too. I don't, I, do you want to know what? Who cares about spices? That's what I have to say. Hey. Like, why are spices <laughs> such a thing? We like the water, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. The spice the brings life, though, Jamie. The spice expands Sp- consciousness. Spice life. Like the Spice Girls. <laughs> Jamie would like the movie if she watched it. Oh, you should watch the movie. It's very good. (laughs) Well, um, does anybody have anything else to say or do you want me to just like close this out? here? I apologize in advance for the comments (laughs) you're probably going to get on this video. I'm so excited to see what comes out of it. In fact, if anything that we said made you irritated, first off, good. (laughs) That's what kind of this series is about is usually just people that are not exactly on the same wavelength when it comes to a certain game. Um, and I would be interested to see what your thoughts are on Endless Winter, for one. Um, that is kind of the game that we were highlighting today. Um, if you want to put in your ranking of those three games and you've played Lost Ruins of Arnak, Dune Imperium, and Endless Winter, I would like to see your ranking of that as well, just because, you know, we did it here. Um, but yeah, what are your thoughts on Endless Winter? Does it need the expansions to be good? Is it good just base game, you know, um, and if you want to join in on the discussion even more, we do have a discord channel that is called fire and ice where we can discuss even in further detail, um, about this video and our opinions on it. Um, we're going to have a link for that down below. If you haven't followed there, um, we're also going to have a link to Jeff and Jamie's channel because we both love foster the meeple so freaking much. And I was so happy to have them here. Um, me and Tim were just, just so excited. So thank you guys. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for, thanks for having us, guys. guys. It's always, us, guys. always a blast. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Just such a good time. Um, wow. But with that, guys, uh, that is actually going to be the end of today's video. Um, we will see you next time. Goodbye. See you later. Later days. Jeff, you have to say it. Later days. <laughs>